Welcome back, everybody. This is Cliff again with another episode of our combat boot camp series. And today I want to start to delve into the details of dealing with vehicles. Vehicles add a whole extra level of complexity in Volume 2, but they're kind of fun. In a way, they sort of distract a bit from the infantry action, which is the guts of the game, in my opinion. But they do make for an, an interesting little bit of extra thinking to implement them properly and to use them as support vehicles to help with your infantry attack. They're not the stars of the show in this game. Some games, like Combat Commander, pretty much ignore armor altogether. Because <clears throat> Chad Jensen felt like the scale was too small. And really, these maps only being about 14 acres or so, sticking a couple of tanks out there makes for really close-in action. Nevertheless, I decided to split this vehicle material up into two units, one for armor fighting vehicles, the tanks, for now, because there aren't any assault guns or armored cars yet. And today, with the other support vehicles, both friendly and enemy, and I decided to begin with the more ubiquitous, which is the Jeep. I'm going to try to cover about 10 different aspects of these vehicles. I'm not going to try to go exhaustively through the rules because that would be tedious. So each vehicle in this game comes with its own display mat. And that's true of the Jeeps too, which are the most common. So you go up to friendly here and we pull out our Jeep mat. There's our Jeep mat. The mat will contain the counter for the vehicle to put on the board, the red arrow against that green background, not so great. Should have like a white background or white border around it. But anyway, that determines its facing. You can only move in that facing. The arrow points toward a hex side, not toward the apex. And then you can rotate that as you need. So we should be able to rotate that. Yeah, it's control that way. Control brackets. Highlight it. There you go. You can turn it along the road. Okay. The display mat also gives you the damage and is a place to position your <coughs> personnel and any weapons associated with the vehicle. The Jeeps are the most common because in any mission that you play, in your campaign, there's a chance that you could bring a Jeep along. You just have to roll a D10 at the beginning and decide whether you want to use it or not. There's a 20% chance, a zero or one, that you're going to get a Jeep with a 50 cal. That Modus has got good penetration, so it's handy against harder targets. <clears throat> not as good against infantry. Two to four, 30% chance. You're going to get a Jeep with an M1919 30 cal, which is a much better weapon against infantry. Or five, you're going to get just a Jeep with no weapons. You can run around with it, haul around casualties, I guess. And then six to nine, you don't get a Jeep. All right, when it comes to crew, Jeeps have a crew of one, basically the driver. We drive it with a regular soldier. Could be one in your squad if they have the driver skill. If you've not managed to roll driver skill, you're going to have to get a driver from the pool. So you get a free driver. Let me move this over just a smidge. And yeah, where are my guys here? Do 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 here. Crew pull out a random driver and I got Watson and he goes in he's my driver 
if your Jeep is armed, let's say I got a 1919, you can either put it so the passenger one can operate it or passenger two can operate it. Your choice. I'll put a passenger one and you would put one of your soldiers in this Jeep to operate that weapon. Remember, machine guns are run by TQ. <clears throat> so you probably wanna, wanna put a fairly good TQ soldier in there that doesn't have as great a weapon skill because why give up a good weapon to get a better weapon if you don't have to? So if I pull up like my soldiers here, I'd look for somebody who has a decent TQ, like a five TQ or so, that has not such a great weapon skill in your campaigns, mostly like five fours, five fives, five fours, about I can best I can see here. In your campaigns, you'd find somebody and stick them in there with a good TQ, probably not as good a weapon skill, your choice. So that's the display mat, that is crew. Um, initiative, vehicles have initiative like anything does. On the initiative track, you have to put your vehicles, but Jeeps belong to Abel. So the driver belongs to Abel. The gunner belongs to whatever group he was in. In this case, I just happened to put another Abel there. So in this case, the Jeep would all operate on Abel's initiative. The driver would do his driving. The gunner would do his gunning. All on Abel. But it could be possible you put a Charlie here. Then the driver drives on Abel. Gunner shoots with Charlie. Speaking of movement. Vehicles have different movement abilities. And the movement of vehicles is limited more than personnel. There is now terrain that is impassable. So let me pull up the impassable terrain for you. To do. If you look here, we've got impassable terrain in this new chart. We could see that rocks and buildings and marshes are impassable. And so is bocage and so are walls. So is rubble and the abbey, fortified buildings obviously, and fountains. So there is impassable terrain. It's not legal to enter those with a vehicle. In addition, trucks and jeeps, wheeled vehicles, not tracked vehicles, have trees as being impassable, which really limits the utility of Jeeps and trucks in most maps. With a Bocage map, with the woods map, with Bocage, if it is truly Bocage and not a hedge, that really limits where your Jeeps and trucks can go and the trees block them out too. All right, let's get rid of that. Back to movement. You can give these drivers different move orders. They can be stopped from slow on up to fast and they can reverse. They can only move the direction that they are facing. So if I give this guy, let's say a crawl, which is the slowest order, it's one hex every impulse. And you see that there is a modifier, a minus two, for all firing from that Jeep during this turn. The faster you move, the worse that modifier is. If you're sitting still, you don't have to deal with that modifier. If he's crawling one, you'll notice that there's a one here in the center. Like enemy soldiers, all vehicles must have their direction of movement predetermined at the beginning of the turn. So this Jeep on this road, let's say that this is my compass. This is impassable. If I run, I could run this guy as a 5-4 from here. 
he'd go 5, 4, 5, 4. So I have to commit him to going 5, 4, 5, 4, crawl 5, 4. Impulse 1, he gets to move. Impulse 2, he gets a free rotation and a move. Impulse 3 gets a free rotation and a move. Impulse 4 gets a free rotation and a move. And that's pretty much how <coughs> vehicles work. If you need more than one rotation, you got to spend a movement action. D different speeds, you'll have the ability to move more than one hex per impulse. So if I go to a faster move, we'll just remove that. And I'll give this guy a move order. Let's say forward. One, two, three, three. And you see now it's a minus five firing modifier. Once again, you have to specify your direction. <clears throat> now wheeled vehicles are susceptible to mud as they move. If the, if the ground conditions are muddy and a wheeled vehicle moves off of the road, there's a chance it's going to get mired stuck in the mud. If they roll at 8 or a 9, they're mired, they're stuck. And they're going to have to try to get unstuck by having the driver pass a TQ check in the subsequent turn with a minus 3 modifier to his TQ. So you want to have good TQs on your drivers to help them get unstuck or just stay on the road with wheeled vehicles if it's muddy. That's movement in a nutshell. Vehicles... <coughs> excuse me. Getting over a cold. Spotting with a vehicle. The soldiers in the vehicle spot like usual. They use their TQs. In a Jeep, there's a 360-degree view. They look around and they spot like normal. There's no extra counters. They just do a spotting check, each um, impulse, like any other soldier. Nothing unusual there. Whenever they're activated, the driver can drive and spot. The vehicle gunner can gun and spot. Firing from the vehicle driver can't fire. He's too busy. He doesn't even have a weapon. If you have a co-driver, if you've stuck somebody in there, the only way a co-driver can fire is if they have a submachine gun or a pistol. Too cumbersome to try to get your grand up. So if you got a submachine gun or you got a pistol, they can fire. They can be given a fire order and shoot on the run, suffering the modifier. If your gunner guns from the Jeep, kind of like Rat Patrol here, those guys should have been British anyway. That always bugged me as a kid even. Those Americans running around in Jeeps. He'd be using his TQ. He'd be using the machine gun. He does not have an assistant gunner. So he's going to suffer the minus three modifier to his firing in addition to whatever movement modifier is out there. And if he's got a rapid fire, that modifier too. And if it's night, that modifier too. And if there's weapon, if there's weather, that modifier too. So these weapons look formidable, but unless the thing is sitting static, with preferably some cover around them and some covering fire from adjacent soldiers, they're not as useful as you might have thought. What if this Jeep is sitting still? Then, let's just remove this guy and just say that this guy is spotting. He's just on spot. We're sitting still. We're still going to have our minus three modifier here. Fire order, we can give him a aim fire. He's on aim fire with his machine gun. He's still got a minus three modifier because he doesn't have an assistant and he runs low on ammo with a single nine. <clears throat> but 
it is a 1919 and it has pretty good reach here out to 20 with no po with no negative modifiers plus one out to seven with a rate of fire of four and this has a, a little bit of penetration against light armor not that important in this game yet all right so that's firing from the vehicle what about when the enemy is shooting at our vehicle well then they're going to fire at our jeep proper jeeps are always spotted and everybody in a vehicle is always spotted so there's no hiding in a vehicle they're just not subtle so everybody's spotted and anybody who has line of sight and a fire order can plug away at them they're going to shoot at this and on our table move this over just a little bit on our order and terrain table we have columns to deal with vehicles depends on how fast the vehicle's moving are they sitting still crawling slowly ahead slow forward fast it gets harder and harder to hit a faster moving vehicle you can see the modifiers they fire like usual the one that has the double asterisks here is worth mentioning in the depression when they're sitting still in a depression you get to ignore any hits on the hull right down here hull suspension track or wheel hits are no effect with the Jeep if you can get a Jeep sitting down in a depression and sitting still and use that as a base of fire there's more or less hull down at that point and they become very hard to effectively hit if you do get a hit from an enemy so the enemy fires they achieve a hit what do you do well you've got to go to a special table so we go to in here well, I got to get rid of this there go in here and we go to truck Jeep hit locations here are the Jeep hit locations and damage right here if you got a hit you have to roll a d100 and you have to consider the facing that you were hit from so let me get this out of the way get this out of the way with our Jeep get this out of the way there's our Jeep he's here if we say we have an enemy and this guy fired from here he had a rear hit so he fired it and got achieved a hit on my Jeep from the rear we have to look up here on our Jeep hit locations from the rear we roll a d100 bingo 62 62 passenger 2 if no passenger 2 then hits the co-driver so then you have to go to your Jeep card your display mat and passenger 2 nobody there hits the co-driver and Mayfield would have to draw a wound card. And if Mayfield wasn't there, I'm just going to other return him. If Mayfield wasn't there, there'd be no effect. Some of these over here, when we're taking hits, you see the engine compartment has an asterisk we have to look that up on our engine compartment damage we have to roll an additional d10 down here to see what happens that nine vehicle explodes <clears throat> always seems a bit extreme to me for a Jeep taking small ar arms fire. I guess you could play it straight up. I'm inclined to think that you'd need a penetration of one 
to cause engine damage. And the engine damage doesn't feel intuitive to me either, just for what it's worth. Seems to me there should be radiator damage here. There should be, well, obviously there should be a chance for fire, engine fire, because if you hit the fuel line carburetor, you could start a fire. You could also hit the alternator or knock out spark plugs. You could knock out ignition and disable the vehicle. So not only should it be stuck in forward or reverse, but it should just be outright disabled. You should be able to hit the engine and disable it and make it immobile. Why is there no immobilization here? I don't know. It seems like engine hits should be able to create immobilization. But that's me going off on a tangent again. So as we get damage, let's say that he shot from the back and he got hit. We got body work, small arms, no effect. Um, passenger one, passenger two, left wheel. So let's say we rolled an 80 and we got left rear wheel. Okay, a left rear wheel would go to, I'm gonna get this closed up again here. Don't need this anymore. Pull up that sheet. Left rear wheel. Damaged. Now you're immobile. Got a flat tire. If you were moving, you would be stopped. That could have effects. If you got hit in the le left rear wheel and you're moving like if you're not moving at all, you're immobilized. Everybody's going to have to leave the building, get out of the vehicle. Um, if you're moving one hex, everybody keeps their order. If you're moving two hexes on the impulse where you lost that wheel and became immobilized, you have everybody has to pass a TQ. If they pass their TQ check, then they get to keep their order. If not, they're going to duck back. And if they were moving faster, they lose their order. If they were moving three hexes at the time, they were really booking down the road, they would lose their orders and become ducked back. So this Jeep would be immobilized. There you go. If you are damaged or you want to jump out otherwise there are a few other commands you can give soldiers in vehicles I'm going to remove this other orders panic is for when you have hatches they won't hat they won't panic they're going to they're going to um, duck back panic is the same as duck back except when you have a hatch and there are no hatches here got our spot. Bailout is in order to evacuate <coughs> the vehicle. Impulse is one and two. You do nothing. Impulse three, your soldier is placed on top of the vehicle. And impulse four, they move away. And mounting up, obviously, to mount into the vehicle if you are dismounted and then relocate to change positions like if you're a co-driver you could slide over into the driver's position yeah so that happens on impulse four so there you go that's the jeep the trucks <clears throat> are pretty much the same. Very similar because they're wheeled vehicles. The trucks also have display mats. So we got a friendly truck, GMC, Deuce and a Half, Jimmy. And we've got the enemy truck, the Opal Blitz. There are three different truck mats for the Germans. Once again, our main position here is the driver. We pull our driver the same way. We pull our cards, these counters off the same way. There's just slight differences. 
So the crew is the same way. We draw our driver. They draw a random soldier from 1 to 18 to act as the driver. So anybody from 1 to 18 is a legal driver, not a machine gunner, not a dummy, because remember, all these guys are spotted and known. So just draw until you get a driver. All right, initiative. Trucks have their own initiative marker. So let me pull up. Well, let's get the table. Make it bigger. There are initiative markers for the trucks. So they get their own initiative. You get that by drawing a card and looking at able for us. If you have two trucks, the first truck gets Able, the second truck gets Baker. We only really ever have one truck. They draw their own for their Opal Blitz as well. They draw a number. So they draw a card. So. Here we go. They draw a card. There it is. Their number is three. That's their initiative number. And it's also going to determine the number, the order for this truck. So that three. I want to put over here on the truck. The driver is going to get an order. We don't get to just select. It's selected for us by the AI. So that truck's order is going to come from vehicle order matrix B, side B, we have a truck column. So we roll on the truck column to get the truck's order. And we roll a D100. And we use morale modifiers down here. Normally, well, usually they're going to be normal morale. 10. Well, let's say it's there. Bold, they would get plus 20. Let's say it's normal. We roll a D100. <clears throat> and I rolled a 30. The 30 would be crawl 1. And now we give the truck that order. Crawl 1 is the order that the driver gets. So my driver, get a move order. Crawl one, and there you go. He would execute that order. So they would move just like I talked about moving. <clears throat> Spotting works as usual, but now we have a limited LOS because trucks are big. The driver can see forward and left. The co-driver, if there is one, can see forward and right. The passengers can't see squat because there's this canvas side up. 11 and 12 can see out the rear. So let's talk about orientation for a sec. When a truck is out here, well, P, how about one um, freehand? The forward is out this way. This is forward. The rear is out this way. This is rear. This is the side. This is the side. If you're fighting, firing from 1503 here at the truck that's following that hex edge in, 
between forward and side, that's from the side. So this technically is from the side. And so would this guy be. Because they're firing down that hex edge here. I guess it goes like that. Very sloppy. Trucks can only move forward and they can move in reverse if they have a reverse order. Other than that, you have to be turning. Okay, spotting, as I said, positions 11 and 12 can see out the rear. Firing from the vehicle, just like the Jeeps, driver can't shoot, co driver can only fire if they have a machine gun or a pistol, and they have to. If they're an enemy um, soldier, so you got an enemy um, leader in the co-driver, he has to pass a TQ, and then you'll be given an aim fire order <clears throat> if he has a submachine gun or a pistol. Firing at the vehicle, same way as usual. Look it up in that table, see if you got a hit. If you have a hit, you have to look it up in the table for truck and jeep and now you use the truck locations if you have an asterisk you have to look it up with the damage results so truck location hit if we fired from the side we get a hull hit we have to look that up so if I roll the 50 hull hit look it up Go to the damage here. Let's say I fire from the left side, roll another D100. And if you hit position one, then position one has to draw a card for wounds. If you hit between positions, like one and three, each position must do a morale check. If you kill somebody in a truck, everybody adjacent to him has to take a morale check, which includes orthogonally so if you hit let me pull up German Opal Blitz if I kill passenger let's get rid of this if I kill passenger 5 passenger 3 and 7 and 4 6 and 8 all have to take a morale check yep <clears throat> So that's it in a nutshell. That's damage to the vehicle. All right. The other orders. If you're going to, if you get immobilized here, if I take truck damage, let's put out that old blitz. And we immobilized him. People need to now bail out. <clears throat> Only four people at a time can bail out. So passengers, they have to start from the highest numbers. Passenger 11 here, 12, 9, and 10 would all bail out. Everybody else is stuck for now. They're all gummed up. They would reposition. They would reposition toward the front. <coughs> As the people bail out, they move toward the rear and in subsequent turns they would bail out. It's going to take you three turns to bail everybody out of this vehicle while they're under fire which makes for kind of a bloodbath. That's the trucks. All right last vehicle for today the half tracks. There are only friendly half tracks I'd like to see German half tracks. I may have to make some. American half tracks. The M3 A1 has its card. It's got a display mat. Now we've got armor values. The other targets were very soft. No real armor, though I think that the engine should have an armor value of one. On the mats, they don't have that. Here, we've got normal hits, glancing blows, 
armor value of one, regardless of where you get hit, which is going to stop small arms fire, but it's probably not going to stop even an MG42. We've got more positions and more crew now. Once again, you draw your driver. You can have a driver. You can have a co-driver just like a truck, but there's now a new position, the cupola, here, front and right is a gunner position. You can stick one of your soldiers in here to run the Modus. You got an M2 50 cal to run. Makes for a good base of fire. This cupola is an exposed position and can be targeted independently of the vehicle. Small arms fire going to be ineffective against the half track but they can shoot at that cupola if they have an aim fire order. <clears throat> in the, well, let's not get to that yet. Let's just do movement and initiative. Do things in order. Crew, like usual. Driver, possibly a co-driver. Put a position in the cupola. You can have 10 passengers as well. They move, like usual, you give your driver orders. You must declare the direction they're going to move. The difference here is this is a semi-tracked vehicle and trees are no longer going to be impassable. <clears throat> if you enter into trees with a half track, their speed must be crawl. If they're going faster, as soon as they enter the trees, they will go down to crawl speed. Spotting, driver, front and left, co-driver, front and right. Cupola has a 360 degree field of view, so he can spot all the way around. Passengers 9 and 10 do not spot. The door is shut in the back. It's not like a truck where the canvas is open. In a truck, can positions 9 and 10 can spot out the rear. Not so in a half track. <clears throat> firing from the vehicle. Your co-driver, if he has a pistol or a semi-automatic weapon, semi weapon, a light machine gun, not an MG, a submachine gun, they can shoot with an aim fire. The cupola can fire. It has the minus three modifier for not having any assistant gunner and it will suffer from any movement as well. 360 view. All right, firing at the vehicle. Small arms are going to be ineffective except against the cupola. So let's look at the table for that. If Do do do. Open hatch cupola right here. Let's just do a rectangle. There's the open hatch cupola. If he's up in the cupola and he's got an order, this is the, the to hit value. You can target him independently. He will be spotted automatically because all crew and passengers in a vehicle are automatically spotted. Firing from the vehicle. Obviously we got our M2, 360 view. The passengers can also stand up and fire over the sides if they don't have a machine gun. If they've got a submachine gun or a rifle or a pistol, they can stand up and lay down fire over the side Odd numbers fire to the left, even numbers fire to the right. In practice, in my games, there are never any passengers in the half tracks. I use them simply as sort of a bunker position to use that modus to lay down suppressive fire to help with my base of fire. But your mileage may vary. If they fire at us and they hit us, we have to use a different table. We don't use the truck jeep. We use half track hit locations. 
orientation, front, side, and rear. You see that the hull hits have asterisks. With that, you have to go down to see what happens. With hull hits, you have to roll a d10 for front, or left side, right side, rear, or engine compartment. You're rolling based on orientation, and only if your penetration value of the incoming fire is greater than the armor value, which is 1. Small arms fire doesn't have a penetration value. So if they fired a MG42 at this, and we hit in the left side, we would go down to weapons characteristics. MG42 has a penetration value of 1D3. So it has a penetration value of between 1 and 3. And it has to be greater than the armor value. So on a 2 or a 3, the MG42 would penetrate. If it penetrates, then you roll the D10 and you see what happens. And I said it was the left side, so we're rolling a D100. So we roll a D3. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, two that's 2. No, that's 3. 5 and 6 are 3. That penetrated. Then I'd have to roll a D100. 73. Shell hits position 9. Position 9 would have to take a wound card if there's anybody in position 9. That's how that works. Once again, we have our duck back order to evacuate, and we have our mount up order to occupy the vehicle. So really, not that complicated yet. Armor fighting vehicles are more complex because they have a bigger crew with more things going on. Our half tracks have their own initiative too. They're going to be on the display mat, and on the turn mat. We've got half tracks M3. A1 half track gets its own draw for an initiative number. That will be the driver. The gunner in the cupola goes by whatever team he's on, Abel ba Baker, Charlie, whoever you put in there, or COM if you happen to have the commander unit along. So trucks and half tracks have their own initiative markers. Jeeps always go with Able. That's the only difference there. Yeah, <clears throat> that is it for the three kinds of vehicles I wanted to draw today, talk about today. They all have their own display mats. Each vehicle has its own display mat. They each have their own crew, their own initiative numbers, they move using the movements, which have to be predefined. The enemy movement for the truck, you get by drawing the initiative number that is looked up on the truck column for movement. Spotting is as normal with vehicles. There are no extra markers for targeting. You can fire from a vehicle, but you're going to suffer from movement penalties. The um, automatic weapons, the machine guns, don't have an assistant. Firing at the vehicle, you use the usual table. You're going to fire at the vehicle proper, except in the case of like the cupola for these vehicles. You resolve the damage with the specific vehicle damage table. And there are a few new orders like panic, which in the half track, if he was buttoned up in the cupola instead of ducking back, he would panic, but it's the same effect. Um, you've got the ability to bail out or mount up. And that's really it. Hopefully you found this somewhat useful. I tried my best. I will move on to armor fighting vehicles next. We're getting close to the end. I will.
talk to you guys next time. Later.